Welcome everyone to the Inland Sports Show. Before we start the show, make sure you like this video and you've subscribed to the Inland Sports Show YouTube channel. And if you're a local business or organization and you'd like to promote yourself on this show, just send us an email, inlandsportsshow at gmail.com. The show starts right now. Garcia's left foot is... And what is up, everybody? Welcome to a very special at-home edition of the Inland Sports Show. I'm your host, Pep Fernandez. Can't wait to get back into the Teen Vision TV 16 studio next week. But we still got some great stuff this week going on here in local sports. So we appreciate you tuning in. If you're watching us right now, make sure you subscribe to the Inland Sports YouTube channel. You can find Inland Sports as well on all of the social media platforms heavily on Instagram, and a little bit of Facebook and Twitter as well. We're, we spend a lot of time on Twitter putting out scores, retweeting scores, and updates here in the IE. So we're going to talk some girls wrestling, football, boys soccer. we got a lot of good stuff coming up. We're going to start with girls wrestling. And Corona High School girls wrestling, they've already been dominant for a while now. Three-time CIF champions, already several tournament titles under their belt this season. Uh, this past Friday, they won the Top Cat Tournament at Redlands East Valley. That was on the heels of their big championship at the Queen of the Hill Tournament at Santiago High School in the city of Corona. Coach Jimmy Bowers does such a great job with that tournament, and it's widely regarded as the best in the West uh, when it comes to girls wrestling and uh, a great precursor to the CIF state meet. In fact, you might even say the caliber of competition based on the out-of-state talent might be better than the CIF state meet. And Corona won the team championship. So with all that said, here's our exclusive interview with the one and only Jimmy Bowers from Corona High School Girls Wrestling. Inland Sports. And now join us here on the Inland Sports Show. He is the head coach of the G Corona Girls Wrestling Team coming off a couple tournament titles, Queen of the Hill, the Top Cat at Rev. It is head coach Jimmy Bowers, the one and only coach. Why is this taking so long to get you on the Inland Sports Show, man? You, you are way past due to get on the show. Well, you know what? I was thinking the same thing. But <laughs> you know what? Um, uh, we're pretty humble around here. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, Bottom line is we, we just stay on the grind. This is a blue collar sport, man, and and I love it. And uh, we just stay on the grind. You know, it's always good to get the accolades here and there. And um, we've been in you know in the press enterprise a lot uh, uh, since gosh, probably for the last ten or the fifteen years I've been coaching. Um, but uh, you know what? Like I said, man, it, it, no matter what, we know we get recognized even in silence. You know, like I always say, I tell my kids. And I'm sure you hear from a lot of successful coaches, but it's lonely at the top, you know, <laughs> and and uh, people are trying to take you down. And I can appreciate that. I, t I take it uh, personally because there was some coach, there's some teams back in the day that I was chasing. Uh, when I first put my team together, um, when the girls first got sanctioned and I was like, man, I, I, I want to be them. I want to beat them. And it was a couple of them. And now we beat them and, um, and of course they're still competitive, but, uh, you know, I'm just trying to, to keep us, uh, successful. And, and let me explain that when I say successful, I don't, I don't define it by the wins, right? The wins will come if they put in the work. I'm talking about getting kids to college, right? Um, ha having them be proud of themselves and, and doing great by themselves and turning the corner because I can tell you some stories, man, uh, of these kids that, you know, that they didn't think they were going to do anything until they joined wrestling. And next you know, they're like, where was this all my life? You know, <laughs> well, but it, you know, it's not like, it's not like other sports, you know, where they grow up doing it. You know, it's very seldom that happens. Well, coach, there's so much I want to ask you, but let me piggyback off what you just said. 
And, uh, and I've said this to several wrestling coaches that the, the wrestling kids, boys and girls, they're some of the greatest student athletes I've ever come across. They're always, you know, the ASB president. They got straight A's or involved in their community or their church. Like they're just great kids. What do you think it is about the sport of wrestling that just kind of grooms great people? I mean, they're going to be future leaders. They're going to be great adults. You know what? It's discipline. It's a disciplined sport. Um, like what I drive in our team here is discipline, integrity, you know, responsibility, accountability. Those are all big time traits that for this particular sport that's not forgiving, you have to take those personally uh, if you want to be successful. And, and you're right, it, great, it creates great human beings. Um, you know, employers. And I was in the corporate world for 25 years and I wanted to hire wrestlers, you know, because I knew that they were punished every day at practice. They understood the grind, but they kept coming back, you know, and that shows one thing right there where they keep coming back no matter how hard it is because they had a, a bigger goal and that was just to finish, right? If they go and start something and they want to finish, uh, they're going to be just successful in life, no matter what they do. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Um, Coach, let me ask you about this season so far. And I know um, the top cat at Rev was just this past week, uh, I think past Friday, but the weekend before, the, the Queen of the Hill, um, if you were, if you, there's a casual wrestling fan out there and they're watching this interview, how would you kind of describe how big, how important, how competitive the Queen of the Hill tournament is? Well, I will tell you this. Um, and this is my baby, by the way. I, I built Queen of the Hill 10 years ago, actually 11 years ago, minus the COVID year. Um, and, you know, everybody who somebody shows up to this tournament that's trying to make a name for themselves to be ranked in the state. Um, and not just in the state. We had the number one team in Arizona, Sunnyside High School, show up. We had the number one team in Nevada, Centennial High School, show up. Um, uh, girls ranked top 10 in the country, a couple of number one ranked girls in the country, uh, 157 state placers. And what I mean by that, by state, this is, means California, for example, there's a lot of states that have multiple state champions, right? And, and multiple state placers in different divisions. California is one of the few states that only has one legit state champion, one legit second place finisher all the way to top eight. So, um, you know, the queen of the hill is, is where it has to be. And I'm not just saying it because uh, it's my tournament, but it's the kids and the team that come to our tournament that make it a great tournament. I just make sure that it's it's a safe place, it's a competitive place, and everybody who's somebody has a good experience. And because of that, it's grown tremendously. I've, I've outgrown every venue that we had, you know? So we're working on some big things right now. Um, for the people that outside that, you know, that just come by or just see this like, on, on a video or something, and then they see how packed it was. You know, we had 902 wrestlers at a hunt from representing 134 schools. You know, it's just, I take pride in that. And like I said, I, I, it's a testament of what me and my staff and my wrestlers, because my boys actually helped me run the tournament. Um, and my girls wrestle in it. And then my parents and my staff basically you know, make sure everything is dressed right dressed, so to speak. So, um, you know, I, I take pride. I, I, you know, we got guys, coaches, well-known coaches, posting on a social media saying, man, Queen of the Hill is where it's at, man. And we're compared to other big tournaments where they have 800-some girls, 600-some girls. Um, and again, it's not really about the numbers, but the numbers were big because the, the, the caliber of wrestlers was tremendous. And, you know, speaking of the caliber of wrestler, I mean, is this the closest thing? I, you mentioned there's some, some great wrestlers came from out of state, but is this the closest thing that we would see to the CIF state meet in terms of competition oh, absolutely. caliber? Yeah. Absolutely. They just said this is a bigger version of the state meet because in the state meet, for the girls at least, it's the top 32 in the state compete, right? Here, there's 64 girls in each weight class. You know, so, um, yes, it, 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 and, you know, coaches have told me, man, uh, that are on the state advisory board, man, this is, a, this is like state, you know, if you want to try to beat some top kids, this is where you need to go. 
So, um, and, and it holds a lot of weight, fortunately, when they place in our tournament, when they go to state rankings and state seeds, they see where they landed. Uh, as far as one of the tournaments are concerned, they, they see where they landed in, in the Queen of the Hill. All right, Coach. So with that said, you guys were the team champions at Queen of the Hill. Uh, yes. I, I know you're, you're three-time CIF champions, but the, the state title, is that something that you feel like, man, if, if the school could bring home one of those, that would be amazing? Man, you know what? You took the words out of my mouth. And as a matter of fact, uh, a couple of my friends that are also my colleagues brought that up uh, at our Queen of the Hill. The Queen of the Hill, let's go back to that real quick. That was the hardest first place finish for us we've ever had. My team is very young, uh, but, you know, they've been training a while and, and they're finally in high school where they can compete. And um, it, they... I mean, it was a team effort. We're well-rounded pretty much from top to bottom. But uh, a couple of my colleagues, it was kind of a joke, like, hey, man, how come at the state meet, you know, um, you, you don't, you're not winning state, you know, you're, you're winning CIF, you're winning every tournament <laughs> that's coming around. And I said, you know what, we just, the kids put a lot of pressure on themselves. Um, I try not to instill too much pressure on them, but because they care so much about our program and what they're trying to do, to represent the C on their chest that sometimes, you know, they, they break and, and it breaks my heart, man, but I, I couldn't be more proud of them. I just try to re reiterate to them and remind them that, Hey, you guys are already champions, man. You're part of an elite organization here. Just go out there and just scrap. And, and, you know, we, we almost won it one year. We, we came in second in 2017 uh, behind a northern team, Selma, which we had, which had a really good squad as well, um, and we were tied after day one, you know, of state, and uh, you know, then we came back in second, but um, we we were ranked top five many years in a row, uh, but you know, we always have your your low years, which I'm okay with, but we we do what we have to do. We like I said, CIF is still a big thing, even though yeah, we want to win a state title, uh, but we you know, CIF championships especially in the Southern section is no joke. You know, we, we, you're still beating really good teams. And, but yes, that is my hopes. You know, I, I'm tired of being the, 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 uh, what do they say? The maid of honor. I'm, I want to be the bride, man. <laughs> you know, I, I'm ready to, I'm ready to, to, to be number one, but, um, you know, that's going to take time. And, and I'll be honest with you, this squad that we have right now. And I've had some really good squads in the past. Um, I truly believe in the next couple of years, uh, that will be right there uh, in, in ranking, you know, shooting for the top two at least. You know, Coach, not too long ago, I covered wrestling in the central section. Um, you mentioned the southern section. Right now, in just terms of girls wrestling, specifically girls, do you feel like the southern section is just as tough as the central section? You mentioned Selma was a was the state champion in 2017 when you were in the hunt for one. But do you feel like the southern section is comparable to the central section? Better? About the same? No, I, I, I think, and, and I'm not saying this because I'm biased, and I'm not saying it because I'm Southern Section. Um, Central Section got a lot of love because they had those big hitters at that particular time. Now, it's not really like that. Southern Section's deep. You know, we, we get a lot of kids to state, and we get a lot of kids at place. We're the highest percentage of state placers at the state tournament. And I believe that it, they're pretty close to either first or second on the boys' side as well. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, we, we got big hitters, man, that, that, uh, that, you know, represent the Southern section and yeah, they're not, not taking away thing away from the central or any other section, uh, because they're all respectively good. But I truly believe that, yes, if, if we're not the same, we're a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Um, but like I said, you know, they, they, they got little ones and twosies out there that are nails, you know, and, I, and again, I can appreciate the fact that they respect our tournament enough to come down uh, and, you know, wrestle with some of the best girls and still show out, you know, on there. So, uh, but yeah, I think, I think um, we're, I think, you know, there's been years that we're just equally as tough, just different numbers. Cause we got a lot more girls, mm -hmm. you know, um, they're like, for us, we've got to go through a CI qualifier to a master's qualifier in our section. A lot of them don't have to do that. You know, we get 32 qualifiers to, top eight you know and they just go top eight initially you know or top six or top five or whatever it is so that's where kind of you know there's it's you, some can say it's kind of apples and oranges too so i don't want to 
uh, um, discredit them in any way because, like I said, they still got those nails, man. Those yeah. those one and twos that are making it to the state, uh, they're doing some damage. Mm-hmm. Coach, um, girls wrestling in in general. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. I just feel like this the sport is exploding right now. And you've been at it for a while. You've seen a lot of girls out on scholarship, um, which is awesome to get your education paid for. So there's opportunities out there for, for girls wrestlers. Um, here we are in 2024. Do you feel like the sport is just still trending up and, and the opportunities continue to open open up for girls that maybe want to wrestle at the next level? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Especially uh, now that, you know, uh, D1 schools are on board. You know, and NCAA is making it happen. You know, uh, before it was just private schools, right? But I will tell you this: when girls sanction, see, I have sanctioned girls wrestling. Okay, and me, I've been coaching thirty-four years, man. I coach boys most of the time, and every time I had girls, it was one or two here on my team, and they had to wrestle boys. You know. Yeah. But I will tell you this, man: that there was a downward trend on boys wrestling because kids, you know, they're just different now. They're like, oh man, I don't want to wear that that leotard they didn't know it was called a singlet right they call it leotard or yoga whatever they thought it was so a lot of kids didn't want to participate so they started changing the the uniform right you got an option you can wear a doublet now but it was still trending down and then when girls got sanctioned and girls were wrestling mind you before they got sanctioned but you know we weren't it wasn't we weren't getting real all the official love you know but once uh, girls got sanctioned, man, I started my team. I had eight girls. Next year, I had 22 girls. And I'll tell you right now, that, and, I, and I truly believe this, and I've talked to many coaches, they agree with me, girls wrestling saved wrestling in general. You know, now we, we have our Olympic medalists, right? Um, uh, it, yeah, it's, it's increased, I'm going to say, by the time they sanction it to now probably over 500% as far as participation is concerned. So, um I'll give another example uh, during COVID, right? How, how such warriors these girls are. And I, I'll speak on behalf of my team. I had 80 kids on my team, right? COVID hit right after state championships came back. All my boys quit except one. I had one boy. I had 30 girls still. And that year we won the CIF title just on duels. We couldn't compete in tournaments, you know, because yeah. all the COVID regulations. But that was just telling men. These girls have a chip on their shoulder. Like, no, man, this is, we broke the mold on this sport and we're sticking with it. We're not bowing down on it. So, yeah, it, it truly saved wrestling, man. And um, I, I've, I've, I'm so glad they did it. And I'm glad that there's other sports that girls wouldn't normally play, like even flag football, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm not sure you know, but I won the championship in flag, girls' flag football too. And this is our first year. <laughs> and we ended up being ranked number one in the Inland Empire in our first year. And, but these are girls, like I said, that want to do a sport that wasn't common for young ladies. And now it is. And man, it's it's just awesome. But so yeah, as far as wrestling is concerned, it's, it's blown up and it's still growing. Absolutely. And I think it's helping on the boys side and the boys, the numbers are going up again as well. Coach, for the girls, when you get them as freshmen, do you find that they have any wrestling experience or maybe they had a sibling, a brother, maybe you know, a dad who wrestled way back in the day and kind of you know, pushed them in that direction? I mean, what, what's their experience or background when you, when you first get them? You know, I'm, I'm glad you asked that because we've been pretty successful up until the last four years without training anybody before high school, right? All my kids or started a high school or afterwards. And because we started building our pro- program and we were successful, we haven't won any CIF titles, by you. We've just been winning tournaments, making the state championships. All of a sudden, kids started coming in and transferring to us, right? So remember what I said earlier, like it's lonely at the top, right? <laughs> Coaches were bitter. Like, hey, man, he's recruiting. Okay, I get the success of your program recruits itself. Yeah. Let me look at Centennial, yeah. Yeah. right? Centennial football. They yeah. called us the Centennial football of girls wrestling. <laughs> and I That's a that compliment. A compliment. <laughs> That's a great compliment. Yeah. It was a big compliment. So I was like, you know, and my, my younger brother used to say, it, if you build it, they will come. Right. Yeah. And that's exactly what we did. And we built it and they came. And again, these are kids that just wrestled from freshmen and they were getting on the state podiums and they didn't know what this was about. They just know sometimes they felt like they lost the match and they won because 
They don't know what's going on. They don't pay attention to the score. They don't pay attention to the time. They just wait for it to be over, and then they get their hand raised. They're like, wow, I, I just thought I got my butt kicked. <laughs> but then they raise my hand. So, um, yeah, man, it's just – it it's – it's I take this sport personal because, you know, we, we beat the odds. Right. And uh, I'm so glad that my girls uh, now that we're starting to train middle schoolers now. Right. We put we brought our kids club back, uh, which we, we hadn't had in such a long time. But I was like, man, all these other schools are doing kids clubs and they're, st- they're granted. They haven't knocked on wood and beat us, but they're getting more competitive and it's getting more stressed out. If I had any hair, I'd probably lose it all over again. <laughs> And that's how stressed I was. But so then we started, we, we, we got through the middle school, started kids club. And now I'm getting those kids in. Like I said, I, my team is young. I got five freshmen that broke my starting lineup this year. And it's, that's rare that my, that freshmen even get to see is really freshmen or sophomores on my team, at least yeah, get to see the varsity lineup. But I have five freshmen that beat out girls and two of them beat out seniors. So, coach, so, uh, you know, I, you know, I want to wrap it up like this. You, you know, you mentioned so many young wrestlers cracking that the varsity lineup. That I mean, you guys are really good this year. But you you said like, hey, if not this year, the next couple of years, you guys are going to be super competitive in terms of you know making some noise at the CIF state meet. Do you feel like the next couple of years could be pretty special for Corona girls wrestling? Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And you know, I'm going to try to stay humble about it too because I don't want I don't want my girls to put pressure on themselves. Um, as it is, they put pressure on themselves this year because we've already won five tournaments, right? We won five tournaments. Uh, um, the Rev one wasn't really that big. It was a one day, uh, but we went to a Walnut. Yeah, I'll give them their plug. Uh, those are my friends over there. We went to Walnut. This is a good starter tournament, two-day tournament. We won that one. We won Modern Day. Of course, Queen of the Hill is the largest one. Um, and then, of course, Rev and a couple others. So, we're, you know, I, I see, I definitely see big things this year, you know, uh, because they haven't even hit their full potential. You know, my freshmen that are wrestling right now, they're probably wrestling at 50% skill level wow. and they're winning. So I just told them, man, just keep doing what you're doing. And um, we still got time to fine tune it, right? For for the end of uh, January, which is the league finals. And that's where the postseason starts, you know, uh, actually January 27th, CIF duels competition. Wow. Right. We've been in the CIF duels finals three years in a row. So we're hoping we can repeat and, and hopefully bring home a, a couple more uh, championships. Well, Coach, you were the man. Listen, I was I was hoping to keep you on for at least ten minutes, but this was too good. We went into overtime here, so I really appreciate the time. This was this was long overdue, and you know, if you guys end up having this this great season, I'd love to have you back on the show with some of your wrestlers. Maybe even get you guys actually in our in our studio and and do something with that too, because I'm a I'm a big fan, a big fan of girls wrestling as well, and and obviously you're doing big things. And this is like I said, long overdue to get you on the show. So I really appreciate your time, Coach. And I appreciate you too, man. I got excited. Like I said, I was like, that's why when you text, I was like, to the old honor. I was surprised. <laughs> I was like, what? I, we're in it big time now. Let's go. So, um, and I told my girls, I was literally telling them, because I don't ever leave practice. And I said, I got to get on a call. Said, Where are you going? Like, I, w- I was up to something. <laughs> so I, I appreciate it, man. And uh, I appreciate, you know, you you give us uh, um, some air time. And uh, I, I tell you, man, it, it, you know what? I might be their leader. But the girls are the ones that actually do the work, and they're the ones that 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 make me proud and and make this district proud. The, the CNUSD and Corona, you know, they're the ones that really do uh, everything that we can to you know to keep us on the map. Well, you guys are doing a good job. Whatever that recipe is, keep it up because it's it's working right now. Uh, that is Jimmy Bowers. He is the head coach of the Corona Girls Wrestling Team here on the Inland Sports Show. Thanks again, Coach. You got it, man. Appreciate it. The legendary Jimmy Bowers here on the Inland Sports Show. Man, girls wrestling is just blowing up, growing in popularity. We've got some really good teams and wrestlers here in the Inland Empire. So we're going to do a lot more wrestling uh, in the coming weeks as we do the winter sports. Of course, we'll have soccer, basketball, water polo as well. But really trying to make an effort to get more wrestling here on the show. If you watch the Inland Sports Show, you know we go heavy on local football. Yes, I know the football season is over, but we are still basking in the glory of our local champions, including 
RCC, the Tigers, your state champions this year. Coming up next here on the show, we've got their All-American quarterback, Jordan Barton, as we talk about the Tigers' state championship season and what's next for him, uh, trying to get some love from these Division I programs. We'll be right back here on your favorite show, The Inland Sports Show. And this segment of The Inland Sports Show is brought to you by Kin Sporting Goods in Norco number one in the Inland Empire for team uniforms, sports equipment, and letterman's jackets. Boost performance training in Corona. Athletes of all levels and all sports train at Boost. And also ask about the Bass Private School. Paulson Orthodontics in Redlands. Personalized treatment you deserve from an orthodontist you can trust. Chick-fil-A in Rialto, right off the 210 freeway at Ayala Drive. Eat more chicken. Girls, here are five lies society tells you about strength training. Number one, you're going to get buff. That's lies. It's genetically impossible. Number two, muscles are masculine. Wrong. Muscles are empowering. Number three, you're going to gain weight. That's false. Lean muscle burns body fat. Number four, muscles make you bulky. Not at all. For girls, you can expect more muscle tone and definition. Number five, you don't need to strength train. The biggest lie of all. Strength training helps you build confidence, makes you more healthy, and improves your athletic performance. If you want to know more about the benefits of strength training for girls, check out this month's blog at www.boosttrainingsystems.com. Boost man. Thank God, first of all. I, I thank the great people that I've got around me that uh, help support me, the people that work for me. As I started, if it wasn't for the people around me, uh, we probably wouldn't be here right now, but I've got a great staff. I've got great people that do stuff for us outside the store, and uh, we've been very, very fortunate. Our service is impeccable, and we just keep trying to get better every year. We can do online stuff for your teams, as well as, like I said, the screen printing, the embroidery. We also have three women that do extra sewing for us, uh, like tackle tool on uniforms, or uh, the bling or rhinestones for, for different shirts for the ladies. That's why we have uh, certain racks just just for certain schools, and and the uh, the fun the fun about that is that it turns into other schools that may come in here that uh, aren't as close that we can do stuff for them as well. We've had very very good customers throughout the years, and it's just been it's just been a blast. The Inland Sports Show is proud to partner with Dr. Marcus Paulson and Paulson Orthodontics in Redlands. Dr. Paulson and his team work with children, teens, and adults using orthodontic products like traditional braces and Invisalign to make a difference in the appearance, comfort, and function of each patient's teeth. Paulson Orthodontics welcomes new patients, so schedule a visit today. Paulson Orthodontics, we make braces fun. back on your favorite show, the Inland Sports Show. We're still wrapping up the football season locally. Man, it was a great year. High school and for RCC at the college level, the Tigers bringing home another state championship, beating the College 
of San Mateo at Wheelock Stadium on a last second field goal. Dramatic win for RCC. And uh, when you look back the course of the season, remember they lost that uh, that basically that conference championship game against Fullerton, 17 to 16, one point that last regular season game of the year. But they went to the playoffs as the number four seed, the lowest. They go on the road, win a dramatic, thrilling game at Mount Sac, which we had live on Riverside TV. Then they go on a, on the road again to beat Ventura. And then back home for the state finals where they got some revenge against the College of San Mateo. And the guy orchestrating the whole thing on offense, quarterback Jordan Barton. Here's our exclusive interview with Jordan talking about the championship season and what's next. What's on the horizon for the Tigers star quarterback? Inland Sports. And now join us here on the Inland Sports Show. He is an All-American. It's the RCC quarterback of the Tigers. Jordan Barton join us here on the show. And and Jordan, man, so much stuff we want to talk about. Uh, let's talk about the season first. Championship season for RCC. State title beating the College of San Mateo in the finals. But way before that, let's go back to conference play. You guys are undefeated. You're scoring a lot of points. And then you run into Fullerton and you lose by one in that last game of the regular season. Did that motivate you guys? Did that fuel you guys in terms of trying to make that deep playoff run? It motivated us for sure. I think, you know, obviously we weren't expecting to lose any games uh, or this past season. But, uh, you know, I think Fullerton was kind of like an eye opener as far as like we're not ready as a team yet. And we got a lot of things to fix. So that was really good for us. And, that motivated us going into the bye week. I mean, going into that bye week, we were just we were ready to cause havoc, and we wanted to see Fullerton again. And unfortunately, we didn't see him, but you know, we made a statement in the playoffs. Yeah, I was surprised. Uh, you know, Ventura got them uh, in in the playoffs like that. But in your in your Southern California semifinal game, you played on the road at Mount Sac. I had the honor of doing that game on on Riverside TV and. Jordan, I've seen a lot of football, a lot of college football. That was one of the best games I have ever seen. The <laughs> offense for both teams just going up and down the field. Did you feel like, you know, even if you guys were down, that you weren't really out of the game? You always had a chance because the offense was playing so well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was one of those nights where just everything was clicking for us, like on all cylinders. And, you know, we went into halftime. We were down by 17, I think it was. And yeah. even Kraft was saying, don't freak out. Like, we're going to be fine. We're going to get stops. Our defense is going to, you know, get it done the second half. And, as soon as they start getting stops, that just built even more confidence for us. And obviously, we came away with the dubs. So, <laughs> yeah, you're. Yeah, I, we were saying on the broadcast, like hey, RCC. You know, you're going to score points, but you need to get a stop. You need a stop or two. You know, so you can't be trading mm-hmm. touchdowns back and forth. As the quarterback, do you just have to, for the rest of the guys, stay composed, stay calm, stay confident, so the rest of the team, the rest of the offense feels like, okay, yeah, Jordan. Hey, Jordan feels like we're still in this game. Let's do this. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's not like I'm the, I was the whole offense. You know, I had guys around me where you know, I couldn't do my job without them, especially the line. But, uh, yeah, I'm definitely the guy where everyone's looking at me first because I'm the one touching the ball every place. So I had to stay composed and had to keep my confidence up. And, you know, when things were getting rough, I couldn't lose my cool too fast. Or if I did, I had to, you know, kind of collect myself a little bit faster. So, you know, I for sure had to keep my calm. But it, it's real easy, that game. For some reason, it just... Even though we were down by a lot of times in that game, it just felt like we were going to be okay. Was that, you know, crazy to say, you know, because you had some big wins and you, and you beat San Mateo in the finals, but would you, looking back, would you say maybe offensively that was your best game or the offense's best game of the season? Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, me individually, that was definitely my best game. I mean, going for five, some hundred yards, I mean. That was crazy. I mean, I didn't even think I threw for that much. I was thinking maybe over 300, like 400 maybe. <laughs> but uh, 500 is crazy. I mean, I, that's something that – that was just a whole lot of hard work that week and everything. And then I think as an offense, that was probably one of the best performances we had because we all played together. I mean, like you said, we went through some rough patches in that game and we kind of had to, like, collect ourselves a little bit. But we never wavered. And I think we showed a lot of leadership in that game as well. Did that give you guys a lot of confidence going into the the SoCal Championship against Ventura? Because it, that game looked easier than than Mount Sac. Mount Sac's a really good team, but you guys had your way with Ventura on the road. Yeah, no, it definitely gave us a lot more confidence going into that next week. I mean, you win a game like that, you're just your energy's up every week, and we were ready to go to work against Ventura. We know their defense was going to come to play, but um, you know, we knew okay, this is maybe this might be a little destined for us. <laughs> 
And then fast forward to the state finals. You see the College of San Mateo. And I won't go too deep into what happened the previous season, but it was not good for RCC. Um, no. But the Tigers had another crack, um, obviously, at San Mateo. Um, that game went down to a field goal. You guys won it, obviously, at the end. Talk about that game, Jordan, about winning the state championship and doing it in, in dramatic fashion with a game-winning field goal at the at the end. Man, I mean, at the time, I didn't want the game to be close at all. I just wanted to... <laughs> all week I was like, I don't want this game to be close. I want to blow them out. Like, I don't even want to make this close game. I want this to be comfortable. But of course, I mean, like, that's how the season went all year long. So it ended in dramatic fashion. But I mean, it was a storybook ending. I mean, you can't really ask for it to be just a better ending than that. And uh, to win it in the city and to do it with the, the big crowd, the biggest crowd we had all year. And the first time having a full crowd because the stadium was finally finished. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, there's nothing better than that, to be honest. That's what it's all about, right? That's why you play. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's exactly why you play. <laughs> and, and Jordan, you know, and finally here, obviously you're you're an All American. You're a state champion. What's what's your future now? Obviously, you're gonna you're gonna be playing somewhere. I know you're gonna be playing somewhere at the next level. But you know, what's what's the recruiting process like right now for you? You know, the recruiting process is good. You know, it, it's been a little slow at times, but uh, it started to pick up a little bit, and so. I'm trying to weigh my options out. You know, I got some schools that want me over in the spring. Um, but, you know, I may end up sticking around. I don't know yet. And we'll see what happens with these last week and week and a half. But I know wherever I go, I'm going to be all right. Uh, I know, you know, wherever God's got me going, it's going to be good. It's on his timing. So I'm not really worried. I'm just, I just want every coach to know, like, I'm ready. I'm ready to go wherever. And, you know, I'm ready to win another championship somewhere else. Man, if you can win a state championship in California, I feel like you can win anywhere. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, for sure. And it's what a lot of people don't know that California Juco is the toughest Juco out there. I'm putting it out there right now. So, Dude, it's it's the know. best, man. So many bounce backs and so many just great players and great coaches. Like, for sure. It, dude, that level is so good. It is. It is. It's a lot more talent. And, you know, I'd have to say, like, for people that haven't watched the California Juco game in person, to definitely go check one out because there's there's ballers everywhere on the field. Yeah, I mean, you look at the stats, you're a state champion, too. Do you feel like, man, what else can I do? Like, I, you know, I, I won a state championship, and I put up in, insane numbers. <laughs> oh, trust me, that, that's been going through my head every day lately. But uh, like I said, I know it's all going to work out. And, you know, I, I, had, I made a good resume, and I put it all out there. So, you know, there's no, there's no regrets for me. I think coming back to RCC uh, this year, you know, I wanted to see, you know, just basically try out my last option in. You know, I left everything out there, and yeah, I, I did it the right way. You know, and Jordan, too, you would know far better than I would, but because of, you know, the transfer portal is such a big thing now at the Division One level, um, I know it opened. I, is it closed now? I'm not even sure. And and how does that affect maybe how JUCO <laughs> guys get to the next level with the, with so many guys just transferring around? Yeah, honestly, I've been, me and my pops have been trying to figure out, like, <laughs> the transfer portal and, like, kind of when it opens, closes. I think it's supposed to be closed, but I still haven't seen people entering it. So I'm not sure, but it, it has impacted a lot of, uh, you know, Juco guys. And I think if it weren't for the transfer portal, we'd have a lot of guys out right now, too. But, no, that's just the way it is now. Football's changed a little bit, and people want their portal guys, understandably. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I still think the best option is the Juco kids because, you know, we have to go through a lot of things. We face a lot of struggles, and we really do love this game. That's why we go through all the struggles we go through. And so, you know, I think we bring a lot of, a lot of you know, positives to a program for sure. So, you know, it's tough right now, but, you know, for all the Juco guys, we just got to stay patient because we're going to get our shot no matter what. I agree 100%. Jordan, listen, congratulations on the season, the state championship, all the crazy stats you put up this year. I know a lot of people in Riverside and the surrounding communities are very proud of you guys this season. And I know big things are still on the horizon for you, Jordan. So thank you so much for joining thank us you. here on the Inland Sports Show. And thank you so much for having me. You got it. That's the All-American RCC quarterback Jordan Barton here on the Inland Sports Show. Inland Sports. Big time season for RCC quarterback Jordan Barton. And when we come back here on the Inland Sports Show at home edition, a little high school soccer, a little high school basketball, and big news on a local celebration for Heisman winner Jaden Daniels from Cajon High School. We'll be right back here on the Inland Sports Show. And this segment of the Inland Sports Show is brought to you by Kent Sporting Goods in Norco. Number one in the Inland Empire for team uniforms, sports equipment, and letterman's jackets. Boost Performance Training in Corona. 
Athletes of all levels and all sports train at Boost. And also ask about the Bass Private School. Paulson Orthodontics in Redlands. Personalized treatment you deserve from an orthodontist you can trust. Chick-fil-A in Rialto, right off the 210 freeway at Ayala Drive. Eat more chicken. We're back. We're back here at the Boost Performance Center with the one and only Coach Ray Bass with another grit iron question. And Coach, we've been doing this series on parents, not on purpose, but maybe stunting or preventing the athletic growth of their son or daughter. There's a whole list, but here's another one. So what's next on the list? So it's definitely too much expectation for other people to help their kids, you know? Um, don't get me wrong, there's a lot of good coaches out there that can assist in your child's athletic development. The reality is, is that they're the ones that have to go to class every day, they have to put in the work at practice, they have to excel um, on the field. So it kills me when I see parents who don't empower their kids with the tenacity to do more. You know, not to say that there's not good coaches that are out there that can assist, but the reality is, is as parents, we need to provide our student athletes with the tools they need to be successful, like you know, being accountable, self-discipline, and uh, applying a consistent and correct effort. You know, that way they can forge their own path to success. Yeah, sometimes you gotta put it on them, right? Have to let them have some ownership over their success. Okay, so again, we'll be back with another grit iron question on this theme as parents, what are we doing to maybe prevent that growth? We want them to grow and achieve and get better. So we're gonna give you the best tips from this guy right here, the one and only Coach Ray Bass, right here at the Boost Performance Center. I can remember first game of the season against my Seahawks. It was like the coming out party of this kid named Puka Nakua. Yeah. I was like, who's this? And look at him. He's amazing. He deserves all the credit in the world, that Puka. Yeah, even Kyron Williams at running back. We talked about this before. I mean, really, the Rams were, they had a pretty miserable year last year. I don't know if the expectations were very big this year, but the star rookies uh, on offense have really gotten the Rams, uh, you know, back to where they want to be contending in the NFC. And now they're going to go on the road in the first round. And Patrick, we talked about this potential matchup last week. Now it's going to happen. And it's a great storyline in the NFL with Matt Stafford going back to Detroit, where he spent a majority of his career going up against the other quarterback who, who actually got the Rams to a Super Bowl appearance, Mr. Jared Goff, man. So it's a great storyline. Rams at the Lions in the first round. I think equally impressive was the Houston Texans. The Houston Texans were not supposed to make the playoffs. They were not supposed to win their division. I think most people would say that the Jacksonville Jaguars were better. The Indianapolis Colts were better. I think everybody in the, in the division were supposed to be better than the Houston Texans. But the Houston Texans won their division with their rookie quarterback, the pride of Rancho Cucamonga, C.J. Stroud, who, you know, they go on the road. They beat the Colts in Indianapolis and pair that with a Jacksonville loss, and they're your champions in the AFC South. Sports. Oh, yeah, we break it all the way down on KCAL 96.7 FM every Monday and Thursday morning with my boy Patrick in the morning. So uh, check that out. Again, that's KCAL 96.7 FM talking some inland sports. All right. Uh, in this segment, we wanted to talk about some high school basketball, some high school soccer. We had a huge high school basketball game this week in the land of the Big Eight, and it was our Ken Sporting Goods must-see game. Centennial at home against Roosevelt in another clash in the Big Eight League. Well, Centennial, they still uh, dominate the Big Eight League. In fact, they've won 65 straight league games, but this was a close one. 82-78, the final. Centennial wins at home, holding off the Mustangs. Carter Bryant uh, dropped 39 to lead the way for Centennial and head coach Josh Giles. Big win for them uh, against a very 
talented and highly ranked Roosevelt squad. We had Coach Singleton on the show a couple weeks ago. What a great rivalry we've got in the Big 8 League. Two of the best programs around. Two of the best coaches. I could go on and on, uh, but that is easily one of the best rivalries we have here in the IE. Probably the state, man. Those programs are just so good. So many great players. We talked about the great coaches, so that was definitely our Ken Sporting Goods must-see game. Now, high school soccer. If you follow the rankings, we got several local teams highly ranked uh, here in the IE. Specifically, when you look at the Open Division, Division 1, we're talking about Arlington, who's still the number one team in the southern section. We got Citrus Hill, but also keep an eye on Cajon. The Cowboys trying to close out a Citrus Belt League title. They've been really close the last couple of years. This might be their year. They picked up a big road win at Redlands, and this happened. Midland Sports. It's your boy, Derry Zamora, teeing up a couple bangers on the free kick. Ben's like Beckham into the back of the net for uh, one of the two goals he had against the Terriers for our big boost play of the week. Here comes the second one, and it's a real whiz popper. He settles it, takes his pass, and uh, this one's from about, oh, I'd say about 25 yards away, going top shelf, shelf upper 90 for the goal. Uh, Cajon won the game by final score of 3-1. to one. Derry Zamora with two goals, and they were great world-class strikes. That's our big boost play of the week. So it's a good reminder that if you catch a great play on camera, we would love to see it. Send it to us on Inland Sports. Tag us on social media. Or you can send it to our email. That's inlandsportshow at gmail.com. And finally, some big local news for a football star from the area. You might have heard quarterback Jaden Daniels, the pride of Cajon High School, is your Heisman Trophy winner. Uh, the former LSU quarterback had one of the greatest seasons ever by a signal caller at the college level. Now he'll be going to the NFL coming up in a couple of months with the NFL draft in April. But until then, we're still going to celebrate Jaden and what he's done. He's coming back home to San Bernardino. There he is, the former Cowboys quarterback. Uh, on next Saturday, January 20th, there's going to be a Heisman Trophy celebration parade from Cal State San Bernardino to Cajon High School. It's scheduled to begin at 10 a.m. In fact, they have 10 to noon um, on the official flyer for the parade. And then at 1.30 p.m., in the stadium, they're going to have a big uh, ceremony for Jaden Daniels. Again, he rewrote the CIF Southern Section record book in terms of, you know, passing records for a quarterback. Won a CIF title uh, his junior year. Went to a CIF championship game his senior year. <clears throat> One of the most decorated quarterbacks in CIF Southern Section history. <clears throat> so, not a big shock that he is your Heisman Trophy winner this season. So Jaden Daniels, big celebration coming up on January 20th. And we will have coverage right here with Inland Sports. So make sure you follow Inland Sports on social media. We'll give you updates on what that coverage will exactly look like. We're still about a week and a half out. So uh, I know the organizers, I'm, I'm friends with some of them. They're still uh, putting the event together. So once they finally... Uh, finalize some what they're, what they're doing. We'll pass it along, but we'll be out there. So know that. So we'll have some coverage from the Jaden Daniels celebration parade and ceremony from Cajon High School next Saturday, January 20th. Well, that's going to do it for this edition of the Inland Sports Show at Home Edition with uh, Jimmy Bowers, the Corona Girls wrestling coach, and of course, Jordan Barton, the RCC star quarterback. We will be back in the Teen Vision TV 16 studio next week. I already know uh, we've got some guests already booked for next week. We're going to have some high school basketball. Got a big-time local coach. I won't say who it is. That's your teaser to check out next week's show. But high school basketball and also a star wrestler. Another wrestler. I, to I told you. I promise more wrestling. We will have more wrestling. Uh, a big-time state championship contender will join us on the Inland Sports Show next week. Until then, my name is Pep Fernandez. God bless you guys. Stay safe out there. and We'll see you next time on your favorite show, the Inland Sports Show. And this segment of the Inland Sports Show is brought to you by Kent Sporting Goods in Norco, number one in the Inland Empire for team uniforms, sports equipment, and letterman's jackets. Boost performance training in Corona. Athletes of all levels and all sports train at Boost. And also ask about the Bass Private School. 
Paulson Orthodontics in Redlands. Personalized treatment you deserve from an orthodontist you can trust. Chick-fil-A in Rialto, right off the 210 freeway at Ayala Drive. Eat more chicken.